maintenance guy. Jeff the maintenance guy. We're going to talk about cable television. The ands, ifs, no, you did not do it, or you did do it. Now, most people don't know about how cable television works. And this little rat's nest I got right here is one wing of our building. We have five other wings of our building that commonly look like this. Now, when you have contractors, you're going to have subcontractors. You're going to have actual Comcast technicians who get paid hourly. Well, subcontractors like CTIS only get paid for this job. The quicker they can get in and out, the quicker they get a paycheck, the quicker they can get another job and get a paycheck. So they're not really in a hurry to make sure everything's nice and tidy. If a Comcast rep came in here right now, hooked you up with cable, and he was actual certified Comcast tech, this is what your cable would look like. Nice and tidy. Now, technically, if you look right here, this is what it would look like. It would have your lead uh, the coming in from the street to your house, to your house, jack one and jack two. If you have more jacks, there will be more jacks. A ground wire would then be grounded. Excellent job. We'll get to these little things later. I'm going to tell you about those. And goes down there to the grounding lug. Excellent job. So now that he's done that on that one, this whole back plate is metal. So anything you hook into here is grounded. Look at these terminators. Spider connector. Spider connectors is what I call these. Um, back in the day, they were they were to keep anti theft. You can twist them and twist them and twist them, and most of the time they don't come off. But I just realized if you pull and twist, they come right off. <laughs> that simple. <laughs> Not only are they used for anti-theft, they have a resist. Some of them have a resistor in them to leak, um, to get dis uh, terminate the uh, line. So there's no leak through on that. But if you hooked into this jack right now, it would be grounded. Let me show you what you're supposed, to, what you're not supposed to do. This. This is coming from a lead into the cable connection. Now. Granted, outside in that box out there, there might be some grounding protection. So even if lightning did strike a power pole or something that this cable wire was connected to, it would probably just bam, go right into that. There's a green box right outside of show. In this green box, <coughs> there it is. Oh, man, it locked it. No way. This has been unlocked for years. Somebody came and locked it. That's crazy. Anyway, there's there's some grounding. Uh, I might show you that later. Uh, but anyway, there is some grounding protection out there. Now, but seriously, just look at this. Leave it hanging. Leave it hanging. These used to be all labeled 304, 303. 303, they were all in order, like, on this board. Why not just keep them that way? Why? Because I'm paid by the job. Shit. I mean, hook this up. Let's go. This better be a 1,002 mega. Okay, it is. Um, when we get residents that complain about TV channels not coming in, and, and you find crap like, uh, well, where, where was it? Here we go. You find crap like this hanging. And as you can see, well, let me focus. As you can see, it's like 12 to 900 megahertz. You need 1,002 megahertz to get channels like Fox 33, stuff like that, um, and all this bull crap. So let's go over to... Um, Somebody who did take responsibility and actually thought about the customer 
and their company's equipment. And they just did not feel like mounting. All they had to do was mount it on this, this metal backing here, but they didn't. But I give them props for this. They actually went the extra mile, put a drop ground wire, labeled it. Oh, what does that say? Oh, they labeled it with do not remove this ground wire. Should it become loose or need to be removed, contact the local cable television company. Spot on, guys. Spot on. Whoever did this 30 in in our 306 apartment, spot on. Look at that. Took the initiative to, to daisy chain a ground wire from the splitter to a direct connect to the drop to another drop. And then they took an Zip tied, oh nice, and come down here, come down there, and grounded it to the grounding block. And this is the actual grounding wire that's going into the ground, eight feet into a grounding rod outside. It goes in the conduit, but it goes out there. Now, what not to do? Don't just leave crap hanging like this. Don't do that. A splitter. Oh, I didn't have another one on my truck. So another splitter. Coil this around just for the effects of a service loop. Uh, just direct tap into the customer's thing. They have the highest signal strength right now. Done deal. My computer says it's good. Bam, I can do the job. This, surprisingly is kind of like a enunciator or something uh 2500 megahertz so this is pretty cool like a enunciator or whatever this is they use underground cable no problem with that really but uh it goes back it goes to the splitter that's connected to the metal which is grounded because all that metal is touching this green wire if it's not touching the green wire and it's like this Lightning hits this, and look at this, splitter goes over, goes over to another splitter. What the hell? At least it's 1,002 megahertz, but they're, they're dropping dB off of this. And that is, I'm really curious what that was, but um, any open drops like this? Should be terminated with a 75 ohm resistor. It's not. Um, uh, this main, this main drop right here, as you can see, it's cored out. It's yeah, there's nothing. There. It's nothing there. It's not even hooked up anymore. But uh, yeah, something to be wary of uh, when somebody hooks up your TV and your equipment blows up, and then they try to charge you for it because they're they're going around doing this stupid crap. Just loose. Direct drop in. Both of your jacks, both of your equipment. <laughs> These splitters do not stop lightning from coming through. If lightning goes into this wire, it'll go through the shield. It'll it'll ground out. It'll go and it'll go down to the ground before it gets to the customer's equipment. In most cases. A direct hit one. Let's go over these real quick. This is how AT&T gives you bandwidth that Comcast can give you. Okay. Look at this. They're going through their wire. It turns it into their two wire. Two wire. Goes over. And see, they can do like multiple, I guess. Multiple things. But that goes up and then it goes into your phone block. This is your phone block here. So... With that being said, these little doodads are everywhere. And every time they hook in the Comcast, Comcast gets ingress because these little things right here are interfering so much. There you go. That's what that is. It's a DSL filter. Instead of sending DSL filters to... And see how it says uh, 8.5 megahertz? It's, it's just killing Comcast when they do that. They have them hooked up everywhere in here. And I've unhooked a couple of them and 
And uh, AT&T has come back out here to figure out something, and I figured out that when they come out here, they don't do that again. So, it's pretty bad. But uh, cable, television, telephones, whatever. Something to watch out for. Jeff, the maintenance guy, just uh, giving you a heads up. Have a great day.